Welcome to our very exciting webinar live presentation. Really, it's live. Presentation of Vulcan. Vulcan Project is something that Digico has been working on for about the last two years. John has been locked in a small condensed room with his team and they have once again come up with a new product for us to launch for you today. It's a very special product because we're launching it to you privately via the power of the internet. We also have a unique way of presenting it because we've gone all virtual reality minority report. So we're going to run you through some of the aspects of the console and some of the design features that we've put into it. And we're going to show you how we've put it all together and made what is Vulcan. Let's have a look at how we've designed the Vulcan project and how it all goes together. First of all, I'm going to pull in a chassis. Now that's a little bit small for you to see, so let's enlarge that for you. And we'll give it a little rotation so that you can see around the whole footprint of the product. We're also going to need to have some faders and some metering. So let's bring in a couple of fader panels. As you can see, they nicely fit in and look like a traditional Digico layout. We're also going to need to have a high resolution touchscreen. So let's bring one of those in. That's a very familiar workflow for our customer base. And we're going to bring in now some encoders so that you can control the, the parameters of the console. Let's rotate that so you get a full effect of what the console could look like. This is Vulcan. Next, we're going to have a look at some more of the channel controls. So let's bring in our EQ controls. As you can see, they drop in perfectly next to the screen, so they're aligned next to the graphic representation that you see when you assign an EQ. But wouldn't it be nice if we could have hidden to lit technology on a product of this size? Well, we can. Next, let's have a look at the rotaries that sit underneath the screen. Wouldn't it be good if they indicated by color whether they were controlling the auxiliaries or the dynamic sections? Well, they can. Let's make them hidden to lit as well. And now you can see the surface has come alive, indicating exactly what parameters are being controlled by which of the encoders. Truly a Digico product. One of the other important things with a digital console is the feedback of the metering. Well, take a closer look at the work surface, shall we? As you can see, we have the dynamics controls exactly where you would expect them. But on the Vulcan project, we've also put in the gain reduction meters you'd normally see on the SD7 or SD5. So let's turn them on. We've also put in some additional metering to show you the action of the gates. So you can see whether the gates are opening or closing. And you can see these on the surface now too. In fact, the feedback from the work surface is unrivaled at this price point. Not that you know what the price is yet, but you will find out later. If you look at the work surface in front of you now, you'll see that there's a blank section on the right hand side. And we've left that there so that we can put in an assignable master section that you would ordinarily find on something like an SD7 or an SD5. Let me bring in some of those features now for you so you can see how they work. First of all, I'm going to bring in some faders. And as you can see, you've got two assignable faders with their own displays and their own metering. These can be assigned to be any of the, the channel processing parameters, or they can be your solo master controls as well, just like you would have on your SD7. Hopefully you've all got an SD7. Now we're going to bring in the top section. And if I bring in the top section, you can see we've got some dedicated buttons that are there for you to assign to macros. There is also a conveniently placed snapshot panel that allows you to quickly control and access your snapshot list, as well as firing the next and the previous snapshots. All of these illuminate to show you exactly what is being controlled and what functions you have on the surface at any one time. Let me rotate it one more time so you can get the full effect of how compact and user-friendly this work surface really is. I think you'll have to agree, it's starting to look like quite a console. That's the work surface covered. Now let's have a look at the back of the console so we can see some of the connectivity options. First of all, I'll stop it rotating. 
Now it's stopped, you can take a good look and you'll be able to see straight away that it's got a very standard local I.O. format. We have eight microphone inputs on the back, we have eight line outputs, and we have eight AES connections for the local digital sources. But if we look a little bit closer, you'll see down here, there are two MADIs as well. So you've got connectivity for two MADI ports, plus you've got a UB MADI connection for 24 tracks of recording at 96K. So that's integrated and built into the work surface as extra I.O. We've managed to inherit some cool features from the S-Series as well. You'll notice if you look at the back of the work surface, there are two slots for DMI cards. Let's bring in some of the options that you might want to use. Here's a Dante module. Plug it directly into the back of your Vulcan and straight away you've got Dante connectivity. No need to purchase an orange box. You're instantly into the work surface with a Dante DMI card. You can also fit in a Waves module. So if you want to take advantage of the SoundGrid platform and all of the many plugins that are available now on there, simple enough to just add a Waves DMI. But we have a huge family of DMI cards and all of those can be plugged into the Vulcan. Let's bring some of those in now. As you can see, there's a huge array of different DMI cards, all of which can plug into your Vulcan and be changed between different projects or tours, depending on what your requirement is. And of course, because it's an SD series product, you also have the option to upgrade straight into the OptiCore network, which allows a Vulcan to sit happily anywhere on a loop with any of the other SD series products, making it truly part of the SD family. Now we've looked at all the connectivity on the back, let's rotate it round to the front. And I'm gonna stop it again so that we can take a look at the front work surface. Now this is obviously in an illuminated environment. Let's take a look at how it would look in a more natural environment for a Digico console. Let's turn out the lights. Now you can see the work surface, but it, it probably needs something else. It's a little bit hard to read some of the controls. So what we should really have is a light bar. Now you can see it's a true Digico product. It has the RGB hidden to lit technology built into the encoders. It has the 15 inch touchscreen and it has the light bar ready for you to start mixing in any environment. Let's turn the lights back on and take another look at the console. Now I think we should have a look at some of the specifications. So let's move the hardware down and let's have a look at what we've got on the Vulcan. So starting with channels, we'll pull in the channels. And actually, we've got 72 full processing channels on the console. And as you can imagine, they look just like the standard Core 2 processing strips you see on any of the other SD consoles. So there we are, 72 channels. Let's put those up here for now. We also have busing on the product, of course, and we've got 36 buses. And these buses you can freely assign to be either auxiliaries or groups, mono or stereo. Let's move those up. Oh, and because it's a Digico product, let's not forget that the master busing and the solo buses are on top of those 36 buses. We've also got built in, if we slide these out, a 12 by 8 output matrix. And the outputs have got full processing as you would expect on an SD product. Let's move those up now as well. Let's have a look at our onboard effects. Well, there are 12 effects units that can be assigned and you've got a choice of effects that you can route to from either the channel strips or from the busing. So it's fully flexible as again you would expect on an SD product. We've also put in some VCAs and we've got 12 control groups assignable in the normal way and also with the moving fader or VCA options. Move those over here now too. We're building up quite a specification and we're doing it quite quickly. So I hope you can still see here the array of features that are in your Vulcan console. We also have on board 16 graphic EQs. And again, these can be assigned on auxiliaries, busing, or on any of the channel strips. And of course, they're assigned to the work surface faders and they have the ident, as you would expect, on any Digico product. Now, that's a full array of features we've talked about, but also built in, we've got the Core 2 features. 
So there's full dynamic EQ on every one of those processing strips. There are digitubes on every one of those processing strips, and there are multiband dynamics as well. So you have full function channels across all of the console, whether it's an output or an input. Now we've looked at the software features of the product and the work surface, let's bring it back in and take one last look at the work surface. But it's not really a Digico yet. It needs a couple of extra touches that make people realise it's been designed specifically for live sound and specifically for our user base. Give me a minute. What do we have on the SD7? A headphone hook. We should have one of these on Vulcan. So there we go, that's the Vulcan console. But actually, when you look at it, there's something missing. It's not really what you would expect from the next console from Digico, and there's something missing that we think our customers would want. And as with all Digico launches, there has to be a little surprise at the end. So let's put this console into a high-speed spin and see exactly what would arrive on the work surface when it comes to a standstill. There you have it. It's got two screens, two full 15-inch touchscreens that allow you to access and control what is the new Digico SD12. So I probably won't see you in Anaheim this year because you're going to be back in your own markets doing your own launches of SD12 to your customers. But uh, I think I'm going to head over to Anaheim right now and get ready for this important launch. You have a good Christmas and thanks for taking part in our exciting new project. See you all soon.